They're currently at $149.56. Yahoo analysts estimate that they can go up to $220.28 in the next 12 months. Hey guys, we're going to talk about a company, Zoetis Inc. This is a fundamentally sound company that recently hit its 52-week low. And you'll notice that it's starting to move up a little now. It's not a green candle, but it has that long tail. We'll see. It's starting to move up. We want to see if it continues to move up. In any event, the stocks that I analyze, the stocks that are on my watch list, I break down into three tiers. That is a three-star, the most fundamentally sound, two-star, which is beneath that, and one-star, which is the least fundamentally sound, but still fundamentally sound enough to make the watch list. Well, Zoetis Inc. is a two-star. They're currently at $149.56. Yahoo analysts estimate that they can go up to $220.28 in the next 12 months. And they actually have an earnings report dropping on May 2nd. So guys, you know, when it comes to earnings reports, like I say, they're sort of like casinos. You don't know whether that earnings report is going to come out good and that stock is going to jump up, or if that earnings report is going to come out bad and that stock price is really going to drop. I've seen quite a few drop just recently, but then United Healthcare just about a week ago jumped up dramatically. So you don't know what's going to happen, but if you haven't bought the stock yet and you don't have the stomach for that kind of roller coaster ride, you may want to wait until after the earnings report to buy that stock. In any event, we're going to jump into the analysis on this company, but before doing that, let's just look at a couple of things one thing i wanted to speak to you about is this stock comes from a weekly series that i put out which is this week's stock winners where i let you know which fundamentally sound stocks reach their annual low price and they're starting to move back up as well as that, I put out a this month's option pick where one of the stocks that's chosen from this week's stock winners is chosen for our monthly option pick. Now, I do have a this week's option picks, but that's inside of my Patreon channel. You can see the link to that if you go to the homepage of the YouTube channel. In any event, having said that, let's jump over into the analysis for this stock. Okay, so the company that we're looking at today is Zotis Inc. Ticker symbol is ZTS. Now, this company if we look at their earnings per share, their earnings per share actually increased over the last previous, or I should say over the previous five years. It was $3.11 a share in 2019, $3.42 a share in 2020. $4.27 a share in 2021, $4.49 a share in 2022, 
and five dollars and seven cents a share in 2023. Now we're not all the way through 2024. We're just in April, but the earnings per share so far by the Yahoo Finance Analyst is projected to be $5.06 a share. Sometimes that goes up, sometimes it drops, but that's their projection so far. But having said that, let's look at the high and low prices for this stock over the previous five years. In 2019, this stock's low price was $78.67 a share. Their high price was $129.34 a share. That was an increase of 64.41% throughout the year. In 2020, our COVID lockdown year, their low price was $90.07 a share. Their high price was $170.20 a share. That was an increase of 88.96% throughout the course of the year. In 2021, their low price was $140.79 a share. Their high price was $242.46 a share. That was an increase of 72.21%. Now, notice their low and high prices were increasing every year until we get to 2022. Their low price was $129.66 a share. Their high price was $229.70 a share. So they dropped from the previous year. But that still was an increase of 77.16% over the course of the year. And in 2023, their low price was $143.81 a share. Their high price was $199.63 a share. That was an increase of 38.82%. So if we look at what's projected for this year so far, their low price right now is $149.56, but Yahoo analysts project their high price to be $220.28 a share. If Yahoo analysts are correct, that will be an increase of 47.29% in 2024. Now, if we look at the low PE ratio of this stock, and usually the low PE ratio can tell us how far we can expect a stock to fall. In 2019, it was 25.30. In 2020, it was 26.34. In 2021, it was 32.97. In 2022, it was 28.88. And in 2023, it was 28.36. And right now, it's 29.56. So is it possible that it can move up? Well, if we look at the five previous years, particularly 21, 22, and 23, we'd say it's possible. But let's say it was to drop back to 
let's say 28.36, which is what it was in 2023. And we multiply that by the earnings per share. then the stock would just fall from its current price of $149.56 to $143.50. But let's get a little more extreme than that. In 2019, it was 25.30. So let's say it falls all the way back there, 25.30. Times the earnings per share five point zero six equals that would be a hundred and twenty eight dollars and one cents that it would fall to. Now, I'm not speaking in terms of guarantees. We know the stock can fall lower. We know that the P.E. ratio can fall even lower than 2530. However, what we're looking at is probabilities. So having said that, having looked at where Yahoo Analysts estimated can go, and having looked at how far it can fall based on P.E. ratio, we're going to take a look at the income statement. Um, just to want to reemphasize, like we said when looking at the candlestick chart, this stock has an earnings report coming up on May 2nd. Also, the free cash flow yield is 2.27 percent. Now let's take a look at the income statement. We see that in 2019 this company made six billion two hundred and sixty million in sales and revenue. Of that they retained one billion five hundred million. That was a profit margin of 23.96 percent pretty decent in 2020 they made six billion six hundred and seventy five million in um sales and revenue they retained one billion six hundred and thirty eight million after paying all expenses that was a profit margin of 24.54 percent in 2021 they made seven billion seven hundred and seventy six million and they retained two billion thirty seven million after paying all expenses that was a profit margin of 26.20 percent it's increasing in 2022 they had sales and revenue of 8 billion 80 million and after paying all expenses they retained 2 billion 114 million that was 26.16 percent and then in 2023, they had sales and revenue of eight billion five hundred and forty-four million. And after paying all expenses, they retained two billion three hundred and forty-four million. Um, in that income, that was a profit margin of twenty-seven. 0.43 percent so this profit margin is going up every year the net income the well I should say 
the we like the kind of sales and revenue they're doing. They're in the billions, and their profit margin is great, in my opinion, in the twenties. Let's jump down and look at their return on equity. Now we know this return on equity figure can be a little elevated when the debt to equity is over 200%. Their debt to equity is a little high, but, um, but in 2019, the return on equity is shown 55.39%. In 2020, it's shown 43.41%. In 2021, it's shown 44.83%. In 2022, it's shown 48.01%. But the significant thing is that in 2023, their debt to equity actually drops to under 200, 186.24, and the return on equity is still 46.96%. So their income statement is very good, and the balance sheet would leave something to be desired. But the return on equity is pretty decent to me as well. Not just decent, I would say it's pretty good, 46.96%. Having said that, let's take a look at that balance sheet. And we notice for the balance sheet, their current assets exceed their current liabilities for all five years, which is what we want to see. And their total assets exceed their total liabilities for all five years. It's not a huge amount in terms of exceeding, but it's decent. It seems to be a passable balance sheet. If we want to move down to the dividend section, we see that this company does pay a dividend. They paid $314 million in 2019, $380 million in 2020, $474 million in 2021, 611 million in 2022 and 692 million in 2023. So let's jump down to our changing capital stock. And what is changing capital stock? This company is a public company. So they're making all of these shares of the company available for shareholders to buy. But a company can do a couple of things with their shares of stock. One, they can keep selling shares of stock to make the company almost like an to make the shares of stock almost like an ATM they keep selling selling shares of stock which is horrible for you as a shareholder so we hate when the company is selling more shares of stock and then they could be buying back more shares of their own stock, which means for each year, this company is buying back shares of its own stock that's available out there. That's what we love 
as a shareholder. So, what did this company do? In 2019, they bought back $626 million worth of shares. In 2020, they bought back $250 million worth. In 2021, they bought back $743 million worth. In 2022, they bought back $1,594,000,000 worth. And in 2023, they bought back $1,092,000,000 worth. So, that's what we love to see. Company buying back shares of its own stock. Now, we're going to skip over changing current and long-term debt because we already covered that in the balance sheet. But if we move down to the free cash flow section, free cash flow is significant. How much of this money is this company retaining towards the end of the year? But also, it's very significant when the company pays a dividend because the dividend is actually taken from the free cash flow. So we want to know if the company has enough to f free cash flow to be giving you a dividend or are they just giving a dividend to attract stock buyers but they really can't afford to give one. Well, this company after paying the dividend in 2019, they had $1,042,000,000 left over. In 2020, they had $1,314,000,000 left over. In 2021, they had $1,264,000,000 left over. In 2022, they had $716,000,000 left over. And in 2023, they had 933 million left over. So they do have enough to be paying these dividends. Now, I have a video on the channel called The Truth About Book Value. And you could look at that to see why. But having said that, I'm really not very concerned about book value unless it's a negative number. And book value tells you, okay, if this company was to close overnight, how much would you get for your shares of stock that you're holding but I don't find the book value to be very valuable unless it's negative in any event this company's book value is ten dollars and ninety cents what I find more significant than the book value in my own research of stocks is when they're buying back shares of stock every year when they've developed that as a pattern but having said that the pb ratio is 13.72 this company has a beta of 0.85 and what that means is how volatile is this company the market generally moves at a beta of around, around 1. So if it moves at a beta higher than 1, it's more volatile than the market. If it's under 1, it's less volatile than the market. Zoetis Inc. has 456,950,000.
well, let, let, yeah, let's just say 456.95 million outstanding shares. Of those 456 million outstanding shares, 0.23% of them is owned by insiders, those who work in or are involved in the company. Now, 0.23 is a very small number, but remember, that's 0.23 of 456.95 million. So you'll be larger than you think. And 95.60% of this company is owned by large banks and institutions. Their last dividend that they distribute was 43 cents a share and their dividend yield is 1.15 percent with a PEG ratio of 3.04. Now Zotus Inc. is in the drug manufacturers and um, the drug manufacturers that have specialty and generic industry and the healthcare sector. Miss Karen, I'm sorry, Miss Kristen C. Peck, born 1971, is the CEO and director, and she was appointed in January of 2020. So we've been analyzing it since 2019. It seems to be running pretty well and since 2020. In any event, that's the analysis for Zoda Sync, guys. I look forward to speaking to you in the next video. Have a great day.